ahead and begin our uh, keynote session. You can take your seats. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I'm going to go ahead and introduce. It's, it's, our, our keynote session is going to become more of a fireside chat. And I'd like to introduce Susan Allen, who's the founder of US PAC, who came in from Washington for our event today. And Prince and you are one of our board members uh, in, in the Southeast region are gonna, are gonna introduce our keynote and, and conduct a fireside chat. Then after that, we'll have lunch. As a reminder again, uh, and I'm guilty of it because my phone rang and I just turned it off. Turn off your cell phones or put them on silent or buzz. So I really appreciate it. Thanks. Susan? Good morning, everybody. For those of you who are standing, if you can please uh, sit down because you are in for a treat today. Um, it truly is my honor and privilege to introduce our keynote speaker here. And you probably have heard these words before, honor and privilege, but I truly mean when I say those words. And here is why I say that. It's, it's, an, Ameri it's an American dream to come the, to this country one day and to be successful. Everybody, all, all of us who came from um, Asian American countries had this dream to be successful. What Ken has done is, in my opinion, I think even beyond a dream, to come to this country, get the education, start a company at the age of 28, and then get, take, start another company after that, and at the age of 36, sell that company for four billion dollars. That's billion with a B. That is remarkable. And then, not just to do it once, but to have another company that you take public four years later, and that company being declared as IPO of the year. I mean, that is remarkable to do it again and again and again. And that's why it gives me tremendous honor and privilege to introduce Ken Shi. Um, he is the founder and president uh, and chief executive officer of Fortinet, the company that just went public in 2009, that was lauded by Renaissance Capital as the 2009 IPO of the year. In 2006, Ken was named a technology pioneer by World Economic Forum and Time Magazine, and Northern California Entrepreneur of the Year by Ernst & Young. He was he was also recognized as a top five entrepreneur by Entrepreneur Magazine in 2005 and top 25 Chinese Americans in business by Forbes in, in 2010. Also, he is called the father of United Threat Management, also known as UTM, in the Info Security cover story this year. With that, before I uh, ask Ken to comment, I know Susan, you know him very well, so if you can chime in and tell us a little bit about Ken and what kind of person he is and tell us a little bit more about him. Sure, Prince. Uh, good day, everybody. Uh, behind all that accolades, all that accomplishment, my role here for the next couple of minutes is to tell you Ken, the person that I've known for more than 12 years. Um, 12 years ago, when Ken was just about to uh, sell his, uh, uh, start his new company, which he took public later on. I got to know about him through a mutual friend in Silicon Valley. Um, I was still practicing law, and I was the volunteer president of the U.S. Pan Asian American Chamber of Commerce. And I began to walk, travel around the country at the request of the federal government to reach out to the Asian American businesses. So at that time, um, uh, the technology was in vogue. Uh, Asian Americans were the poster child of technology in the, in the minority businesses, I heard about Ken and I said, I want to meet him. He opened his door and met with me in his office in Silicon Valley. And ever since then, he has been open to me. When I called him, he would answer the phone call. And no matter how, how successful he was, um, later on I found that he had taken that comp company public and he was opening another company. And throughout all these years, um, I would travel to California, I would call, I would send him an email, I said, Ken, I'm here, can we meet? If he is in town, he said, where are you? 
I would tell him I'm in San Francisco downtown. He said, well, I'm just around the corner having a meeting. Let me walk over. This man who took two companies public will walk over the park and say, I'll either meet you in the park if we don't have much time, or come to your hotel and have a cup of coffee. So um, what did he do with us? He became the Asian American Entrepreneur of the Year for US PAC. That was at the time that US PAC was beginning to, to dive deep into the mud and tell the world, tell America, that when you look at Asian Americans, we are not just restaurant owners, dry clean shopkeepers, or grocery store keepers. We're not just IT companies, we are engineers and architects and great performing, performing artists, such like Yo Yo Ma and IMK, whom Ken knows very well. In 2007, when we had our conference in San Francisco, Ken was there as our Asian American co-chair, and I paired him with Yao Ming. You know who was taller? Of course, Yao Ming. <laughs> but in my heart and soul, in Asian American interest, in working with the community and reaching back, I know Yao Ming very well too through that experience. But Ken came up first. Last year, at our 25th anniversary, I called Ken and said, our, con our conference is going to be in LA. He tried to convince me to go to Silicon Valley. I said, Ken, I signed a contract with the hotel already. I <laughs> could have been in LA. He flew in from, from Beijing to be there with us. Not only that, was he was also co-chair of our conference. He introduced me to folks in Silicon Valley. He introduced me to an organization called the Hua Yun Science and Technology Association an organization of Chinese American engineers that he has helped to found, nurture, and grow. This is the man behind all that accomplishment. Ernst and Young Entrepreneur of the Year, Father of this and that. But I just want to let you know that Ken has a heart, and he does look after the community where he lives. With that, Ken, did I miss anything? No, I think Susan Prince, you just put too many, too many good words on me. I'm just a regular engineer, put it this way. I come to this country 22 years ago and uh, to be trained as an engineer and uh, somehow lucky now about somehow get into this uh, space they call the internet security and uh, just keeping growing. And all, all my three companies are in the same space. That's the only thing I know. Uh, but I met Susan actually it's about 15 years ago with Timothy Wu and all this uh, uh, because uh, that's my second company. Uh, that time, besides technical, all these uh, products, yes, I don't know much about all how to do business, how to do sales marketing. So Susan also the other, a lot of friends gave me a lot of a coach and uh, teach me a lot of uh, since uh, how, how to build a business, how to build a company because for us really, all our life is really learning train as an engineer. So how to grow beyond the technical engineer side. That's really the challenge we, we have to face it. And uh, from all these 20 some years, it's really a great experience. Thank you. Ken, tell us a little bit about, I mean, what made you start your first company? I mean, what was that defining moment where you says, well, I think I want to do something different. I want to get into something. I come, I come here uh, going to, uh, to study because my, my parents is a professor in Tsinghua University, which I, I grew up there. Uh, their dream is really I need to be well educated and become a professor later. Uh, that's where, uh, since I was in the field, uh, in the networking, internet, all these things, so that's why I come to Stanford, try to finish my PhD. Uh, but I, I am a drop off. So. <laughs> Did not quite finish. The reason is really quite uh, quite simple. I think about all this year back. Uh, that time when I studied in Stanford, I, I, I really don't have much money at all. So when I come to this country 22 years ago, I only have a few hundred dollars in the pocket. So I went to school and uh, <clears throat> luckily I know some uh, programming, the technology things, and the internet started taking off. Uh, so you know in the Silicon Valley actually, uh, Silicon Valley is a building called uh, IC. 
it's not an integrated circuit, it's really the India Chinese community because we all come in as an engineer. And which <coughs> kind of that's our specialty and try to uh, try to uh, uh, build some uh, some some company business over there. So that's I'm the same. I, I kind of uh, during my study I said, okay, maybe I can use my skill do some consulting for some company which may need to build an internet service, they need to build an email, and um, they need to set up some firewall for the internet security things. Uh, so that's where I, I start doing some kind of consulting job. Uh, when I was a study, uh, so that's in like uh, 1990, and uh, and uh, after doing that, it's, it's kind of interesting. Maybe I, I, I can start a company uh, uh, since uh, once we engage with some of the customers, say maybe I can use the company to to kind of run things because uh, somehow I uh, when I uh, when I come to here, I already have my bachelor graduate degree. Yeah, so that, that that's probably uh, the since it's my first the, the first company I say is uh, not successful because I doing that for four years and uh, the company did not get any venture money because in Silicon Valley there really when you start a company you really really the first uh, thing to measure how how successful you really can venture or some other uh, investor invest in your company <clears throat> so I did not get any money there because the company not quite growing beyond the, the consulting some some project is really the software for our product which is a, it's kind of low cost because you are really using your programming skill uh, to program something and then make it working uh, so that that's really the, the first company but during that time I feel I, I learned a lot uh, since uh, which how to engage with the customer and how to get some sales some some marketing some operation going uh, so that's pretty much uh, the first company uh, been there for four years. Probably made enough money, bought a house. So that that's I feel is kind of conversion. And also meet my wife. So we we, we also grew up in the same area. Uh, she, she grew up in the city Valley there. Uh, so that's 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 kind of after four years. I feel well. Probably if we really want to do something um, uh, kind of a uh, uh, bigger or. or better, I probably need to restart again. So that's how I started my second company, starting to change the things from doing the software uh, into doing the, some chips, uh, silicon, uh, yeah, silicon chip to the security function. So I found other two partners, uh, the company called uh, Nesquin, and uh, that's started in 90, 1996. Uh, second company, since I feel really from the beginning, I want to build something different than all the other uh, uh, the network security company basically they doing all everything in software. Uh, I started doing in the ASIC chip, so that's kind of a unique and difference. And uh, that company take out pretty quick. And uh, <laughs> later one IPO, and then later sold to uh, sold to Juniper uh, for four billion dollars. Uh, so that's kind of a after kind of a made some money, very successful there. Uh, I have to say sometimes. Uh, I feel my, my foot is not on the ground that time. It's really, oh, I think, oh, business can be easy, and uh, maybe I can be the investor. I can be really do some other things. Uh, so I started jumping into the VC business in early 2000. So after a few months, the stock market crashed. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, oh, I need to really think about what I'm really good at and what I should be doing. <clears throat> and that time, only like 37, I say, what I should be doing going forward. So I really go back to see uh, what uh, what my skill is and also what's the things I can do and how why the second company more successful. So that's what started the third company. Uh, that's in end of 2000, the company called Fortinet. That's the company I'm running right now. So also want to do something different than the normal people do in the network security space, really using the ASIC chip, do the antivirus and uh, like intrusion firewall. Uh, using a hardware-based system. Uh, so that also makes things quite unique compared to the other approach, really running software on a server. Uh, <clears throat> so that's gave us some advantage. So the company, uh, since we launched the product in 2002, growing quite nicely. Uh, so we won IPO in 2009. Uh, that's the first company won IPO in Silicon Valley in two years, because basically pretty much 2008, early 2009, there's a 
uh, difficult to run IPO because Wall Street all this downturn there. So we are pretty successful there. And then since then, I think it's going okay. Uh, I have to say, all all my from my heart, really, it's really the help from all the friends and all the like Susan and also all the guys and all the other uh, people working together to make this successful. For me, I, I, I always I'm, I'm just an engineer. It, it's really I still more involved in some technical things. Uh, that's I feel I, I I'm good at. It's really everybody in company be more is a is a partner because a lot of people work good and. Uh, sales, marketing, finance, and uh, I just try to do what I'm good at uh, in, in this area. Now, one thing I noticed, I was looking at all the companies that you've been part of, there's one common theme, and that's cutting edge technology and innovation. And in any company, I mean, to differentiate yourself from the competition, innovation is absolutely required. Can you tell us, I mean, how do you foster innovation within your company? Uh, the, the space we are in is uh, uh, related to the internet, internet security. One thing really, since changing very, very fast. Uh, there's always new application come to the internet. There's always a new, uh, uh, different technology coming uh, in, in, into this space. Uh, that's where one thing keep learning is very, very critical, very, very important. You can see. Uh, uh, the story like a Google, Yahoo, they both do the searching, but if something you keep it falling behind, then you're starting kind of, um, the business maybe kind of uh, starting kind of growing up, not that fast. So that's where I feel uh, even uh, even right now, I commit myself 10 hours per week and uh, need to be uh, keeping learning, sometimes go to the class, sometimes go to whatever, uh, just try to get myself to catch up all these technical things and uh, also keep learning. So that, that's the part I feel uh, uh, kind of important. And also, uh, in this space, I think really the innovation, because there's always a new business model, uh, because the internet is really connected, all, everybody globally together, also connect all the applications together. Uh, so that's the sense really kind of uh, <coughs> keep on all this uh, uh, <coughs> innovation, keep up all the learning skill, I feel is a very, very critical uh, in, in, in the internet space. Now, one of the things, I mean, it, it, one of the classic books in business is Good to Great by Jim Collins. And in that, he studied the businesses over the 20 years life cycles, businesses that have been extremely successful. And they looked at the traits of the CEO, uh, and one of the key traits of the CEOs that have been very successful is humility. And looking at you, I can see why that is such a great trait. Can you tell us kind of how is it, kind of you sold your company for $4 billion, and how come you're not pounding your chest? And I mean, how can you be so humble? As, <laughs> uh, as, I, as, I, I kind of, uh, after I made uh, enough money, like uh, when I saw that last company made a few hundred million dollars, really, I say, oh, I can, I can be uh, relaxed. I can be no longer need to work in. And, uh, but I, I stay home for actually for like uh, two, three months. But I feel I'm more frustrated and also kind of a few very, very uncomfortable and healthy just just, uh, uh, just stay there. And uh, so I think maybe all, all the things on my level, I, I need to go to work. And also my wife also feels strange. Why you come stay home for lunch? <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> so and that, that, that's I feel uh, sometimes when we do things really not, not quite uh, see, hey, whether uh, just make money or whatever. It's it's really the way to uh, to uh, to keep uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, since you feel you can make some difference and also keep the lifestyle you you very comfortable with. It's it's, it's not quite a. I have to say if let me play golf every day, do some others like go to the beach every day, I probably will be more unhappy compared to. Uh, I would rather stay with all the all the people we working together. We feel we can build something really uh, ch change the space. It's not because I'm great, because I, I try the other way. I feel, <laughs> I feel kind of horrible, I put it this way. And then I, I, I say I would rather come work five days a week and then enjoy the weekend with the family. And that's probably the, 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 the most happy way to live for myself. Now, um, humility is obviously key to success as a CEO. I mean, can you tell us what other things in within yourself or things that you have done that have been responsible for your success over these years? Uh, one thing is really, uh, I feel uh, uh, 
these countries agreed is really uh, everybody is all equal. It's all kind of, everybody is kind of more immigrant. Uh, some of them come from here like uh, 200, 300 years ago. Uh, someone like me come here like 20 some years ago. <clears throat> some just come in in the last few years. Uh, <clears throat> so that's where we all try to build some dream here, and uh, <clears throat> and that's where uh, kind of for me I get a lot of help uh, when I try to start my business like Susan, like all these things. So that's I think in this organization is great really. Uh, for us, like uh, my background is really all trained from engineer. I, I don't take any business class in when I was in school, uh, so I have to come uh, to learn from the, the the friend like Susan and some other people to say hey, how 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 to how to run a business because uh, somehow the background in China there's also not now the not at least twenty some years ago when I come there's a no uh, no this uh, capitalism all these kind of things. Uh, that, that's the things I feel is really, and also we see so many other uh, other people here and uh, try to uh, try to see how we can uh, melt into the uh, to the community and uh, try to get all these things going. I think that, that that's probably the way uh, we maybe can share some experience with. And uh, uh, there's a, a old saying in, in in Chinese. There's like a, a four stage uh, to be successful. Uh, the first one is uh, is a uh, you uh, use in Chinese called a xiu a xiu shen is mean how to improve in yourself, and then the second stage is uh, called a qi jia, is uh, how how to build a family, <laughs> how to build a good family, and then the the third one is like zhi uh, bo uh, is really how to get a community kind of uh, build up the community is the, the third stage, and then the, the fourth stage really uh, how to uh, like uh, lead the world, help other other things and. Uh, so I think that, that that's the part I think you know, we need to keep in improving from the personal level and uh, keeping get a family kind of all uh, build our family and then keeping help the community and eventually try to maybe do something can can change the space change the world a little bit. Uh, so that's the part I feel we, we need to keep in uh, improving every day. Uh, now I guess one one of the things uh, business owners and CEOs in particular always struggle is the work life balance and uh, especially a CEO of such a large company like Portland and, and companies before how have you as a leader uh, maintained that work-life balance uh, I think the the, the problem is sometimes uh, running some company is really public company really a lot of scene a lot of schedule is really out of my control uh, that's where we try to see anything you can really uh, keep up like uh, keep Educate, learning yourself, keep exercise, and uh, that that's can can get uh, things go more long term, right? So sometimes, you, like well, I, I was trained to be, a, it's quite interesting. You mentioned Yao Ming, uh, he's a professional sport. I'm also was trained to be a professional volleyball player uh, because of my height, as a, like a thirty some years ago, and uh, that's where uh, when you train as a like a athlete there keep up the shape, keep up all the training. So the same thing to running a company, right? it's, a, it's a long journey, it can be like a five to 10 years. Just, uh, and you cannot be rushed since like all for, for a few days, for a few weeks. It, it, it's really uh, keep up your own pace, have some kind of a, uh, control and uh, make sure you get enough time to keep learning, keep in, uh, keep in exercise and, and also keep in working with people. The other thing really need to be trust all the people, all the all the all the, the co-workers. That's why we see everybody in the company is more is a partner, because everyone really know their own space well, and that, that's the part we also keep learning from each other. So we, we keep a quite open uh, open policy in the, in the company space, as so everybody can communicate to whatever the level from board level to the uh, to different different. Uh, Manager exactly level, so that's the part we try to keep it very open and uh, and even uh, when we try to see uh, who is doing great job, like in the exactly level, it's not measured by me or by the board. It's really by peer. So each quarter is really the peer review and the peer uh, score each other. Uh, it's kind of more uh, <coughs> kind of a, a secret score each other. That that's kind of a uh, give decide how much bonus whatever. Uh, some other manager guy. Uh, so that's kind of since really encourage people working together and uh, 
Uh, it, it's more like when you play a uh, team sport, it's really, you, you need to depend on each other to really who deliver what's the, the skill, what's the, what's the things there, and that's can make the whole game successful. Uh, at least I'm trying, I put it this way, probably working for, for this company, but I, 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 it, it, so far it uh, seems okay. Now, uh, one of the things, I guess, the dreams of a business owner is to raise venture capital and um, um, go and do an IPO at some, some point. Can you walk us through uh, your experience? I mean, how you uh, raised your venture capital for your very first company and um, what was the experience like taking it to IPO? I mean, I know it's very hectic before that, but if you can walk everybody through that experience a little bit. Um. I started to raise the VC money uh, in my second company, uh, Nesquim, and uh, I have to say, in the first round, we uh, we we try pretty hard, uh, but it's uh, still cannot quite convince uh, VC. And then we say, maybe maybe let's more commit ourselves, because if you look at the past experience, we don't have a lot of experience and all this uh, especially in the business area. Uh, so the way me and other two partner, we say let's pretty much get the lowest pay as possible, like $1,000 per month. And then we also put in all our savings, at times only 50K into the company. And then other investor match, uh, we got like $1 to $2 million. And then since starting, uh, one thing we, we really want to do is really, uh, that's why I'm training all this year, uh, you need to uh, uh, like uh, undercommit and overachieve. So that's very key to start and build up all the all the credential, all the reputation there. So that's where the first company I have to say, uh, and and also the things I learned in the uh, uh, in the second company, Nesquin, really sometimes the VC they may have a little bit different interest compared to entrepreneur. Uh, VC because they take some other investors' money, they need to get the return in ten years. Sometimes they're interest to get money returned back may not be fully matched. Sometimes entrepreneur want to build something much longer term. Uh, so that's where in the second company, I would let be struggle with some of the VCs really. Uh, sometimes they try to sell the company quick or sometimes they want to uh, just focus grow the sales, no need to build long term like advanced technology. Uh, so since I'm Learning in that time, I just take that one, and then later when I build this company, the third company I build, I really need to be uh, changing some of the, the, the way VC play. Uh, so in this company, it's very interesting. Uh, we reached $100 million uh, in, in the first uh, four years, and but we have 100 investors. Uh, so there's only like one VC kind of on the board. We have like a seven board member, but only one VC on the board, which they invest like 20, 30 million. But they are also very, very helpful uh, because uh, a lot of money is really come from the smaller, uh, like uh, some angel investors, some we call the, the business partner, the strategic investor. So they, we feel we more line up the interest better. Uh, so that, that is, I, I think back all these years, really the, the, the lucky things really, uh, all these hundreds of investors, they all made money. So when they IPO, they get a hundred times return. Uh, if they hold the stock till today, they get a 300 times return. But the, the, the risk is right, if I really screw up, if I really make things not successful, I may also damage the relation like hundred times. So that, that's the risky part. But I feel this uh, kind of way we, we build up this company is really the, the, the investor, when they invest, is more trust the people, they, they also kind of more line up, the bin, they can see the business growing, and uh, that that's gave the entrepreneur a little bit more control to build a company we feel can really last for a long, long time, uh, build some technology uh, which can really change the space. Uh, so that, that that's my experience, it's really, uh, when you talk to the investor and uh, try to see what's their interest, what's your interest, and also the timing also need to match. Because some of the VC fund, they may need to return in five to seven years, some maybe in the 10 years. Uh, if that can match up well, that, that, that's as good. And on the other side, I found out a lot of investor and also a lot of partner gave me a lot of help. Because uh, if, especially if we call it some strategic partner, it's really uh, someone can be your distributor and uh, your your supplier and also uh, uh, the reseller, system integrator, uh, they 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 uh, 
kind of know your product, know the technology, know the space well. So that's why they see the value. So they are more happy to, to, to invest, to help you grow it. So like 100, 100 investors behind I feel has 100, uh, we call the business partnership or the BD person, uh, big development person, which can actually keep him refer me to the, uh, to the, to the, to the great employee, to the, to the, to the business uh, customer, and also all the other advice I got in the, in the space. Uh, that's really, really starting to give me a lot of help. That's I feel uh, in this company, uh, 49 is my third time doing, doing the same thing in the same space. It's uh, from the VC investor point of view, I feel doing better than my second one. The first one, I did not get any money. <laughs> Uh, Ken, um, so when you sold your uh, first company and you got four billion dollars in your pocket, you went home, you thought you could retire, and your wife said, get out. <laughs> and now you're back in your uh, new company, you took it public, and you're still operating, and you're now taking a new, taking it to new heights. I think a lot of the folks in the audience would like to know, what is a typical day now that you're out of the house? And what, what worries you? What are your worries, and uh, what's your plan for the next uh, five years? Um, I just feel I'm just like any other people walking. Uh, just get up in the in the in the morning and uh, and uh, drive to work, and then uh, uh, kind of a sometimes the meeting, sometimes all the different things, even uh, the the one thing is really because uh, running. Global companies sometimes need to be travel a lot, uh, so that's where probably the half times on the road. Uh, <clears throat> on the other side, is really uh, um, I feel uh, the way we keeping the, the the schedule kind of a pretty uh, regular, like I get up and work in and uh, then uh, even even reading some some book on the evening night is really the way uh, help, help help me uh, keep keep keeping the shape. <laughs> And uh, I think that the things that from time to time, uh, some of the worries, some of the challenge I feel is really, uh, once the company grow bigger and bigger, uh, it's really the team, building a team, share the vision, share all this very, very important. And even even founding a company in early days, and uh, it's also quite, quite important to select a partner. Uh, for this company, we hire like a, still relatively small compared to UPS, which has about half a million people. We only have about 1,500 people. It's about 1,000 in US and Canada. Uh, it's really uh, keeping building the team and also have building certain culture in the company to maintain the company uh, vision and growth is really the key. Uh, that's where, uh, like, uh, how to hire the best people. Uh, I think there, there's a book I, I read recently, as I maybe recommend people when you try to, especially some manager try to hire people, uh, it's, a, it's a book called Who, W-H-O, it's a very easy word, it's really, uh, because uh, when hiring people, according to that book, which uh, claim to be the, the broad, the deepest study on all this uh, HR issue, uh, probably half the hiring is the wrong hiring. And when you hire something, some people wrong, May cost you ten times of the of the salary all this because the other other so that's where like uh, in the beginning when you're building up the team try to uh, spend more time that's eventually can make the, the life easier later uh, so that's the part we kind of uh, talk to the team really kind of spend more time to to identify the, the people we can really more closely working together and share the same same vision same dream uh, we found out that also. Uh, a lot of immigrants, a lot of people from Asia, all this uh, India, Chinese, really, we, we, we tend to work in very, very hard. And uh, that's the way we feel we can really kind of build the dream and be more successful. And uh, we are, <coughs> we do see, especially in, in a lot of engineer side, we do see that that's probably the way. Uh, the other thing I, I kind of frustrate now is when I hit my kids, they're, they're, they're now like out age. Which is working on the engineer study. They are they are just just do all kind of video game and all kind of things. But the problem really, uh, I cannot do much about it. <laughs> uh, so that, that that's I think that uh, uh, it is uh, for me. I just just uh, like I said, is uh, I'm just a regular engineer. It's uh, it's uh, just just do my part of the job and get this uh, things going. 
so that, that, that's I, I always uh, uh, treat myself this way. Yeah. One more question on that. We have a lot of uh, Asian American and other, uh, this is the Pan Asian group, including uh, the, the white uh, folks here. Um, what do you think of the relationship uh, of Asian Americans, especially Chinese American, because in Silicon Valley it's really populated by Chinese and Asian Indians or South Asians. Uh, from your perspective, what do you think of the relationship that we as a Pan-Asian American organization, US PAC, have established with the mainstream companies like UPS and China Broadcasting, folks like these huge uh, uh, leaders in the corporate industry? Uh, I think the, the Pan Impact is really uh, is a great organization and also the only organization I know try to help the Asian community uh, to to really grow the business, to establish the, the relation with uh, the government, the bigger company. And uh, <clears throat> that, that's one thing actually, uh, when we start a business, we are kind of afraid of to approach in some big company, the government, because uh, for me, I, I even speak broken English sometimes. <laughs> uh, how can I communicate well? How can I get all this uh, huge company going? That's, that's the way the connection, the, the guanxi, like you say, is really built a lot of success. Uh, on our side, it's really uh, uh, for the Asian community, even sometimes we come to from different background. Uh, so what we feel is really, we also have a lot of things in common. So we all come to this country, we try to build a dream, and, uh, and we also, a lot of, uh, especially in India, Chinese, we more come from the technical background. So we try to be most successful in the technical area first, and then starting growing beyond the technical part. So that's a lot of things we can help him, we can share him, and, and the same things really a kind of, a, uh, I have to say, Asian Americans still relatively small community, probably about 5% of the population. Uh, but on the other side, we do have a lot of things in common, also share a lot of common things with the, the majority of the other population there. Uh, that's where kind of uh, working hard and build this uh, great country. And uh, it's, for me, it's really the one from the, uh, if I can do something from the uh, uh, my space and internet security or some entrepreneurial technology or some other things, I, I feel, feel well very good myself. I know we have a few more minutes left, and I'm sure a lot of you business owners and Asian Americans in general kind of have got questions as well of Ken. So I'll open it up for questions if anybody's got any. I know I've got a list of 100 more questions that I need to go through with you, Ken. <laughs> any questions from the audience? <laughs> 